This week's podcast is sponsored by our friends at Yamaha. Level up your TV sound with the YAS209. Enhance your TV, movies and games with built-in Alexa voice control, DTS Virtual X 3D surround sound, a wireless subwoofer and Bluetooth streaming all in a simple, sleek setup. Visit yamahamusiclondon.com for more details. That's yamahamusiclondon.com. Hello and welcome to the Avifrons Podcast for the 23rd of March and joining me on this edition, Steve Withers. This is how they find us, by our teeth. Kaz Harlow. All I see are dead people. And Ed Selly. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's only popular opinion. On the podcast we do try and be entertaining, we try and be funny at times and we're <laughs> always, <laughs> always silly. I just want to be serious just for a second um, because things are a bit serious out there and we all recognise that and if we are having a bit of a laugh and a joke tonight it's it's in terms of entertaining and trying to be entertaining on a podcast we are not for any uh, second making light of the current situation that we're in um, because it is quite serious and being serious for a minute um, I know I touched on it last week but I really do think that and I know everybody in the podcast will back me up on this a big thank you to everybody that's working solid hours at the minute in the NHS filling shelves uh, driving lorries, keeping things flowing thank you very much for what you're doing people if I could volunteer Amen. I would um, unfortunately I'm in one of the it's groups it. that's at yeah, risk you need to stay in. so I need to stay in uh, no, but... it's at times like this we find out who's really important in society and it's not bankers and go- <laughs> no. people like that key, it's the people that key workers. keep our society going yeah, yeah. Key workers. We now we know who they are, so let's take care of them. And let's remember this when all this is blown over. You just suddenly forget once everything's back to normal. Yeah, Our people still still pay footballers billions and nurses wow. twenty grand. The thing is, if there were only uh, well, however many, there are only ten times, nurses in the country. Yeah, they'd it's, get it's, it's the same. More. It's the same with saying they're not paid the same as politicians. If there were only five hundred and forty-seven nurses, but I'm sure you could you're pay right. Them a lot of money. It's ludicrous. We live in a society where someone gets paid eighty grand a week to kick a football about. Uh, and other people have to work two jobs because they can't survive. I mean, and that's a kind of in in, in the kind of uh, issues that need to be addressed after this is over, because it's Did just you... shown it's just shown how fragile our society is, and it's shown how unfair it is. Yeah, can I just raise the tone ever so slightly? I am absolutely, as you know, I, I live for for plays on words, puns, and uh, and uh, you know things like that. I salute the person uh, first of all absolutely admirable Timpsons the cobblers come uh, key cutter people they're yeah. shutting all of their stores until the, for the foreseeable future everyone's being held on to everyone's being paid uh, presumably yeah. using the government scheme as well very very commendable but uh, absolute hats off I genuflexation to the person who within 15 seconds on of that tweet going out by the Timpson bloke when but what about the key workers obviously is a play on the fact that that's what they do and I just wish I was that, that is a very good pun that's very very good yeah. it uh, is very so, good yeah so in, in all seriousness thank you very much everybody that is working um, all the hours that they're putting in on the front line and keep things going it is appreciated for everybody else I'm only going to say this the once on this podcast because we don't do political politics or anything like that but do follow the advice people and it's easy to find the advice the government websites are there don't look at facebook or anything else i don't you know the proper advice is on the government websites and on the nhs websites follow the advice people because the scenes today uh, i've got to say almost as bad as the scenes of people you know hoarding food and and emptying supermarket shelves and so on you know this is not an excuse to go on holiday to go to the seaside for, and go and walk along the beach with thousands of other people. That's not social distancing. So please just follow yeah, the advice. We, we've discovered three things. Who the key workers in our current society are, how fragile our society is, and how many twats there are out there. Yeah. The self-absorbed. Yeah. The self-absorbed. self I'm sorry, you going to say self-employed there. It's like, well, yeah, fair <laughs> play. But... Well, self-absorbed and self-employed in my case. Yeah. So I must be the only person in the entire country who this week was exactly the same as the previous 10. <laughs> well, this is true. Although I was just saying to, um, uh, the irony is uh, I have put quite a lot of effort into not being a recluse over the last 18 months when really <laughs> I should have doubled down. Um, although that said, singular achievement today. Um, when the Skype call started to record this podcast, I um, when I said hello or whatever it was, I did say so. That was the first word I'd uttered today 
1859 on Sunday. Uh, uh, until that point, I've Don't been you talk like, to what? yourself. No. Yeah. You, know, you, you tend not to do that the first couple of years, Steve, living on your own. It's oh, I, I have full conversations with myself. I yeah, usually I run do through entire well. scenes yeah. from films. <laughs> no, <laughs> on a board. I, I do as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm either talking to me or the, you know, or, or the cat if I'm on my own. Um, <laughs> but, actually, it's uh, weird. No, the cats haven't. Have- the cats have been sunbathing today, so they've been out. So I haven't had an opportunity to have because I did have a, a proper conversation with one of my cats earlier in the week. I put it on Twitter. It was wasn't a his two-way of conversation. No, no, no. It was, it was a case of I was actually running through my schedule for the day with my cat. Well, uh, and again, like, this that's, is, I don't do that. I know. So uh, it's not like I have a moral high ground here. I don't like talking to myself. It's, it's a, just a, a, a personal thing. But uh, yeah, I was having a, pr- a proper, you know, what am I, what we're we doing today? And you know, it, it's ad- it's good because both of my cats are the sort that will just sit there and yell back at you, which makes you feel like it's a sort of two way thing. Even if it's really <laughs> all, all they're saying is, "Look, can you shut up and feed me?" Uh, I so. do think that uh, as long as I've got utilities, internet, food. And ideally, Amazon continue to deliver stuff. I reckon I can do this for a few years, no problem. Well, I've been doing it for Actually. 12. <laughs> yeah, because well, so, I've basically been doing it for the last 10. Yeah. I can't. I, I make no bones about the fact that uh, I miss uh, I miss popping out for a coffee. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I, I've got to say, now that I've been told that I have to stay in, I want to go out. Even though, I'd be, even though if, if that wasn't the case, you I'd be staying stay in. in if... <laughs> but now that I know that... Did I, you, um... You see the video of the guy with the guys asking him a question, saying like, "You, know, you have to stay in." Um, A-R-B, 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 yeah. you A, <laughs> stay in with your wife and child, or B, B. <laughs> Definitely B. Yeah, that was. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, you can self isolate in the car. So I have been out for a drive today, although I went out somewhere that was quiet and away from everyone. Now, people might say, "Well, what happens if you have an accident? You're putting unnecessary strain." on the NHS by doing that. Actually, I, you have more chance of doing yourself some real damage at home. Uh, actually, a uh, much this higher percentage. True. So, you know, going out for a drive, drive. <laughs> going out for a drive on your own, away from everybody, it, uh, that's perfectly fine. Going out for a walk is perfectly fine. As long as there's, if you're with somebody, you have the distance between you. But when you see the photographs today of people, like groups of people, and there's pubs in Scotland that haven't closed down, you know, so people have been in the pubs in Scotland and also, it's just like, think people. Yeah. Well, they're not ordered to shut down in Scotland then. Well, nobody's been ordered, nobody has been ordered to close. So stopping the Scots from drinking is going to be a tall order, isn't it? (laughs) Well, they're going to have to bring in legislation, aren't they? You know. Uh, Um, Well, they're going to have to put armed guards on them. (laughs) (laughs) That's where the army's going. Um, (laughs) Yeah. That said, on the subject of cars, mine. Uh, uh, well, assuming society holds together and it's in the form it is on uh, on Sunday evening, uh, my car arrives on Tuesday. I've got a registration plate and all sorts of things. So, uh, uh, so yes, I will also be self isolating briefly on Tuesday by filling it full of super and lead and endeavouring to headbutt the horizon. <laughs> so, um, which is perfectly yeah. fine, Ed. It's perfectly fine. Just don't mix with people and don't get out of the car. No, never get out of the boat. You need to hit someone. Don't get out of the car. <laughs> I have been playing quite. Uh, actually, I relented. I did say it was. I wasn't wasn't going to have one in the house. But faced with the prospect of my son not going back to school, possibly until September. Ever. Um, <laughs> and I have to say, I don't know. I don't believe for a second that she listens or anyone. But uh, I need to make it abundantly clear that my ex-wife is handling the vast majority of, of childcare because she's essentially because people are coming into the house. We're coming into the house for music lessons and so on and so forth. So full credit to her she's doing the bulk of it but um i am thought oh god uh, i have to do something so i have installed a playstation 4 upstairs um cuz i'm an active parent and um uh, i have been playing quite a lot of uh, grand theft auto so yeah running people down and driving away i've i've had a lot of practice at that <laughs> so um yeah i mean it's amazing that game is what 7 years old now or getting on for its 7th birthday it is still an absolute masterpiece but you know i digress you just reminded me I can um, get out my PSVR and go anywhere I like in a virtual world so, <laughs> without leaving the house or you just leave in the house yep. all you do is just trip over a sofa and break your leg <laughs> I was about to say I could run around a post-apocalyptic landscape but I realised that would also involve just going out the front door <laughs> yeah, that would just pop yeah, just, the post office yeah just go to the supermarket yeah. uh, Kaz, Kaz has been quite quiet here he's still yeah, upset, so, I mean, it... upset about that for his podcast <laughs> <laughs> Is an it is an interesting time, isn't it? I I mean, it's it. There is a there's an awful lot of trust public, 
that you we're placing in people. <laughs> People what's the line, what's the, what's the line from Men in Black? It's something like a person I trust, but people are people stupid. People are, oh yeah, stupid. Yeah, uh, and they're absolutely Basically. right. And it, and it's a. I don't mean to be quoting Men in Black, but I mean it. It is pretty much it because, I mean, from the mass of it, surely it would be a relatively short, relatively short period if everyone just stuck with it. Really, a relatively short period before the people who haven't got any symptoms can start mingling with other people who haven't got any symptoms if people stuck with it. The problem is there are loads of people who are like, no, nah, I'm just going to go to the pub, including Boris Johnson's dad. So He's in know, a high-risk group, too. If you've got the Prime Minister's dad on national TV going, if I want to go to the pub, I'm going to go to the pub, then you, you're going to... I mean, that, that exhibits a certain mentality, and that's where the risk comes in, really, because from the mass of it, surely you could just stay home for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, it's, is, it's not uh, actually, we're not talking, it's not like everyone has to stay home for the rest of the year, but it'll yeah. end up being that way because people won't listen. It's like a giant weeks. version of that primary school class situation where three kids spoil it for everyone else and they're the ones that complain at the end of it. But um, Yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be like that, unfortunately, and, and that's the bit that's a little bit depressing, at least for me. Is is that I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with keeping everyone at home. I right. work from home. I do, I do my best all, with it. But you know, we just ask people to stay at home for a bit. It's not like I mean, it's like oh, it's like yeah, the it's, war. No, it's not like the war. Yeah. In the war, people were dropping bombs on our heads. Yeah, no and, and you had that. to go and fight. All you got to do is sit yeah. at home and watch some porn up for a bit. Is that going to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> Going out, Pro- Mike. Probably if you're so too furious. Just stay at home. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that appears know, to be just... really hard to, to, particularly if you tell people that's what they're going to do. It, as I say, I'm saying people in a real general term, but it, but you get a few people in a room and you talk to them about it, it's fine. But, you know... Yeah, I, basically, I, I, deploy the army and um, if the people start playing up, just shoot them. In fact, you've got my permission to start shooting them now. Because <laughs> I, 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 think, I, I, I wasn't emperor. aware that you were God Emperor, but thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, if I was talking God about, Emperor, we'd be a lot better off. Yeah, talking about self-importance and... Uh... Yeah... <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I mean, unfortunately, one of the downsides of a democracy is that you have to put trust in the people, and there, there's going to be a certain sector of the of the public that are just going to think, well, it doesn't apply to me. I mean, look at anything like that. Look at the law. You know, you get, somebody gets stopped for speed, and they always complain. But were you going faster than the speed limit? Well, what are you complaining about? And it's the same type of thing here. It's like people don't think is going to happen to them. Or it's going to be a mild flu. Unfortunately, I think we're starting to learn now that that was the wrong thing to to it's be not saying. Some of the it's um, nothing the, like the some flu. of the yeah some of the underlying issues that people who have notionally recovered from it seem to have. It's like those aren't fun. So yeah, um, it's uh, yeah. so basically it's, it's for everybody's good. You know what I mean? It's for your own good, and and self isolation is not about you at the end of the day. You know, but not clearly mum and dad. <laughs> Or your grandparents. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, the people's grandparents and mums and dads. So, yeah, just uh, be sensible people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's time to move on. But like I said right at the start, you know, we're going to have a bit of a laugh and a joke and so on. It's it's purely to entertain. We're not making fun of the situation at all. I just want to make Well, you say move on, Phil, but most of this podcast is going to in some way relate to (laughs) coronavirus. Well, unfortunately, (laughs) it's the only thing that seems to be happening at the minute, apart from... from, competitions so cars cheer us all up what can we win <laughs> you can win uh, criterion's march titles on blu-ray um that closes third of april you can win midway on limited edition 4k steelbook it's actually quite a nice set and uh, the movie seems to be fun for by all accounts I, I actually was looking forward to to checking it out but it's been aborted for the time being but but yeah that the midway on limited edition 4k steelbook that closes 25th of march uh, Doctor Sleep on Blu-ray, 25th of March, great film. Uh, Syncopation on Blu-ray, 31st of March, that's a Eureka release. So's Long Day's Journey Into Night on Blu-ray, 31st of March. And Superman Red Sun on Blu-ray, 31st of March. That's where Superman's brought up in Russia. It's really uh, good, actually. Yeah, it, it's, well, a, it's a really... I'm, I'm it, the comic's good. really good. They They change it a little bit unnecessarily for the... For the animation, which is a bit toned down, which is a shame because it's it's got a 15 rating and everything, but it's it's not as good as the comic, which is great. Head over to avforums.com/competitions to enter these, and all competitions open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. We've got one previous competition min- winner, and that's uh, Absolute Reality, who won Come to Daddy on Blu-ray. 
Okay, so, well, well lucky, done to lucky you. Lucky them. Well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it for competitions. We'll be back in a sec with hardware. Right, so moving on, uh, hardware news. Um, we're actually going to come on to lots of news in the film section. The film section is going to be huge this week, basically, because that's where a lot of the news is happening at the minute. Because in terms of hardware, um, obviously <laughs> this this has been going on for quite some time. Um, a lot of suppliers get their components and so on from uh, countries like China and South Korea and so on. And as you're aware, if you've been following the news, um, those countries have been on lockdown, so nothing has been happening. So in terms of new product, there's just not a lot of new product out there for review at the minute. And a there's lot been a of, lot announced, but nothing shipping. Yeah. Um, and if there is stuff out there, um, certainly talking to a lot of the PRs and so on, they're a bit reluctant to send stuff out at the minute as well. So and well, a, lot a lot of, of them are at the office. They're working yeah, they're from, working home, from so home, so there's no one so physically on. around yeah. to send it out. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, and so, they're not being. Not, to be very clear, they're not. It's not just a fear thing or anything like that. One of the lessons that is very early learnt by companies is that you really don't want to announce something ahead, too far ahead of people being able to buy it. Exactly. So it's um, no point having a review with, if you can't with, deal, buy it. with dealer networks. So even with companies building things in in the UK, because uh, a number of UK factories are still doing things on a limited basis. Um, you know, in terms of the social isolate, uh, you know, social distancing rules and so on and so forth, most dealers aren't really going to want you sitting around having a demonstration at the moment. Uh, I mean, they're happy to talk to you about things you might be able to do to your existing system, so on and so forth. But um, uh, you, they're, they're just resigned to the fact that marquee purchases aren't happening. So it's possible, uh, you know, I don't want to promise, over promise and under deliver. It's possible I might be able to still secure one or two quite interesting new things which escaped out hours before everything started to shut down but um, a number of companies have legitimately said to us look we can't send it because we don't know if we can then physically sell it to people who like it yeah. so they're not being unreasonable and yeah. we will work around that yeah so when we say there's we know a lot of stuff coming in for review that is basically why and stuff like new tvs and so on you're looking far mm. later in the year now Be yeah, because we're not, see much we're not going to see much until q3 probably um because if you think uh, you know, things have to get back up and running again. You have to get stock. You have to have stock moving. You have to have shipments moving. You have to have stuff in, like Ed says, you have to have stuff in the stores before um, you want reviews going up. So there's no point doing a review if there's nothing in the store. So it could be some time before you, you start to see uh, some of the new kit coming through. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to do anything <laughs> on Navy Fund. Yeah, I've still got loads to do. of stuff still in the yeah. pipeline. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've just been looking at the at Trello and so on. We've got enough to do us the next two months in yeah. terms of uh, in terms of equipment coming through. There's loads of articles. Um, in fact, we're, we're probably going to be inundated with articles, top tens, all that kind of thing. There's loads of still to talk about in terms of the technology and so on. So it's not like everything's going to shut down is just in terms of reviews it's, unfortunately there's not going to be that many um, uh, or it could be that we just see uh, less over the summer and then when things hopefully start to get back to normal and stock comes in and so on we should start to see stuff towards the end of the year fingers crossed no promises from a hi-fi perspective I think I can continue to do things that you could legitimately buy online because that's sort of ticking along in its own special way but yeah um uh, actually to be fair it's, it's been a bit of a high-end high fest in some of the things i've reviewed over the last couple of months anyway so it's a natural resetting of things that you're going to be looking at there'll be some more affordable items in the next couple of months anyway um so that that's another way of looking at it too so things it'll all be a bit real world top gear doing um doing uh, family hatchbacks for once in their lives <laughs> yeah um <laughs> So, so yeah, there's lots of still to talk about, and obviously, with everybody having to spend time, more time at home, you might be thinking, well, I could really do with updating my system. What's out there? What can I buy online? What can I get through Amazon or whatever, or uh, to improve your TV side of things? And the obvious one, Steve, is a soundbar. I think it's the one item that if you don't have a sound system already in your your living room with your TV, it's the one thing that you can add instant. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, obviously, aside from 
buying a, a new TV. If you if you want to upgrade your existing TV, uh, with a few notable exceptions, um, the easiest way, as you say, is to add a soundbar because no TV sound. I mean, some sound TV sound quite good. I mean, certainly there's the, the Philips flagship TV with the BMW speakers that does sound amazing, but um, most TVs are okay at best. Stick in a soundbar, and the difference can be incredible. I mean, and, and, di- and not just the difference in terms of sound quality, but the difference in terms of the experience you have. Because, you know, as is often said, sound is 50% of a movie experience. And uh, no matter how good your picture is, if your sound's a bit insipid, it's never going to have the real full impact. Put in a, a decent soundbar with a with a with a separate well, subwoofer, and um, and you can be amazed at the difference it can make in terms of your viewing experience. Uh, and uh, I've got a few, I've been looking at a few um, soundbars over the last month or so uh, last six weeks maybe uh, which will gradually be popping up on, on the site over the next two months as Phil's just said um, I'll, I'll go through them in uh, price order so starting at the top working my way down so uh, first of all I had the uh, Bang & Olufsen Bayer Sound Stage which I th- think might be the first B&O kit we've reviewed isn't it? No, I've done a. Um, oh, yeah, you've done one, haven't you? Yeah, you did. Yeah. So, not the first, but certainly, you know, we have had a lot of Bang & and stuff in. Um, so, I was really interested because I, I don't have a lot of experience with B&O myself um, because I haven't reviewed anything before. And uh, this is their first uh, soundbar. So, they're a bit late to the party. But I have to say, they didn't turn up empty handed to this particular bash. Um, the stage is not cheap. But that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's ever owned anything by Bang & Olufsen. It's, uh, it's a single unit soundbar, so there is no uh, separate subwoofer with this one. Um, and it's 1,250 quid. However, much like the Sennheiser, which is twice that price, um, and is a single unit, you know, they have really gone to town in terms of the speakers in the system. So it's, you know, it, it's a much larger unit than than you would probably normally associate with a, with a soundbar because it has got in it. Uh, f- I'm going to read this out because it's got four four inch woofers, four one and a half inch mid range drivers, and three three quarter inch tweeters, and it's also got eleven power amplifiers. So every single driver has its own separate amplification, uh, four times fifty watts on eight of them and three times. Um, so yeah, all of them have got 50 watt amplifiers across all the drivers. So it's a well specified piece of kit, and it does sound really good. I'm now assuming, I appreciate. I'm know, assuming that's well, digital uh, amplification. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think these days, and anything other than <laughs> like a proper amplifier, you can yeah. assume that. Yes, yeah, so it's digital amplification, but they're good. They're, they're good drivers. Really good um, speakers built in, um, and you have the option of either lying it flat down. On the uh, on on a surface in front of the TV, or wall mounting it flat against the wall. Now, I didn't actually wall mount it. I tested. It. They sent it with some little feet you could attach, so you could test it in either orientation. And certainly, from the point of view of the of base performance, having it flat against the surface did improve it because it was you now against solid surface. I think it would have sounded more similar had it actually been mounted flat against the wall rather than me having it on a pair of feet angling it upwards to to for fire at the uh, at the uh, at the viewer, the listener, the main point, the sweet spot, if you like. Um, so, so that that did, I did, there was no sort of difference in terms of bass, but I think that was more because I wasn't um, testing it necessarily mounted against a wall because clearly that's impractical. Um, however, I can say it, it did sound really good. It does support Dolby Atmos. It doesn't support DTSX, although since it's largely internal processing, it's you know there's no reason why it couldn't. Uh, I guess at the moment they don't consider it to be that important. Um, that's not unusual. A lot of manufacturers seem to be um, um, primarily focusing on Atmos because it's the more dominant immersive audio sound format. But uh, it supports Atmos. Uh, it, it's a very well-specified piece of kit. Yes, it isn't cheap, but as you'd expect Bang & Olufsen, it's extremely well-made uh, and it looks gorgeous. Uh, and it does sound great. It sounds really fantastic. So I think if you're a, you know, if you're someone who's who's already invested in the Bang & Olufsen ecosystem, it's something you'd definitely be interested in. Uh, you know, as their first soundbar, and it's certainly uh, going to come recommended when I do get around to writing the review. But um, it, but yeah, I will I will caveat by saying it ain't cheap, but it does sound fantastic. It's a great. Does it come with a remote no, handset? Ah, no. You have oh, to use that's the, a shame uh, because Bo ah. is used. To, sorry, oh, Bang sorry, Olsen. no. Let me, let me take that back. Sorry, I said, it doesn't come with a remote control. You can buy the Bang & Olufsen remote, which is a lovely piece of kit, and they sent it to me along with the soundbar for testing, and it's a really nice remote. And actually, it's interesting because you can also use it to control a C9 
specifically a C9 and not other <laughs> and not other um, uh, LG TVs because I think the C9 was the basis for what Fang and Olufsen's television. So there is a certain amount of um, and you have to basically <laughs> what you do is you connect the you connect the C9 to the um, to the soundbar the, to the stage using a, a, a LAN cable. And then you can actually in, in, uh, control the TV using the Bang & Olufsen remote if you wanted to. Or you can do it the other way around and just use the C9 remote <laughs> to control the Bang & Olufsen. Uh, and also there's also the Bang & Olufsen app as well. So that's probably yeah, that's one thing. It doesn't come with it. You can buy it separately, but it doesn't come with it. Obviously, there's no separate subwoofer. Um, but as I said, the base on it is really impressive considering it doesn't have a separate sub and uh, because uh, it's well made and it's big and it's got plenty of you know, some really decent sized speakers in there some good woofers it does sound uh, really good and yeah it's, it's a great sounding piece of kit and I think if you're a fan of Bang & Olufsen you'll, you'll really enjoy it Bang & Olufsen used to make some always used to make some of the very best and most indestructible IR handsets <laughs> in the industry they were just just masterpieces and they had just ridiculous things like redundant power track circuit so if you the bat if you had a battery leak and damage the standard head there was a second one and stuff like that i mean you could a, a friend of mine i went to school with his dog bet his, his parents <laughs> had a bang and all his dog buried the remote in the garden for a week couldn't find it and it was in the middle of winter so because the, the dog could actually dig into it dug it out not a problem eventually relocated it not a problem remote continued to function as normal although it did have quite a lot of mud in, under the buttons but it's just it's it's it was an abstract question because it's how companies like B&O bring what they're good at to these new categories because I mean performance arguably is the easy bit especially when you've got as you say the money that they've they've got to spend but it's how you persuade people that all of the things that you were historically good at are still relevant and worthwhile in 2020 so i suppose it's a shame that it's a cost option but if it does mean the remote is a good one maybe acceptable and if you've spent that much money you may as well spend some more mm. yeah Don't. and obviously you need to buy a c9 for to have all the interactivity and stuff. details phil yeah. details a mere well, bag it, of it's convenient if you have got one knocking about it does support earc as always i forgot to mention um which is handy uh, so then uh, moving down the price range, so that's 1250 for the basic version of the stage. There are some f- snazzier versions with different finishes and that sort of stuff, a bit more expensive. But the the, sort of the black and silver version that I had, which I thought looked very nice, um, that's 1250 uh, Then we've got the Denon DHT-S516H. So boys, think about your model numbers because that's a ma- I've written it out many times and I still can't remember it. Um, DHT-S516H, H at the end unsurprisingly means it supports HEOS um, it's a 2.1 channel soundbar no immersive audio on this one so it's, you know it's Dolby and, and DTS uh, it's got a separate wireless subwoofer and, and two forward firing channels and obviously it supports the HEOS multi-room um, system that Denos uh, um, and Marantz use uh, and uh, this one £699 so it's a bit toppy on the price I've got to say it's, it's very well made it sounds fantastic but I'd say for that kind of money I'd be expecting a little bit more. This kind of this definitely falls into the ba- ba- uh, the Bowers and Wilkins bracket, um, you know, with the formation bar. Although at least this comes as a 2.1 system with a, with the sub included, uh, and it's not a grand, so it's cheaper, and it comes with a remote control. Um, so it's, this not, is, yeah, it's this not like is, uh, formation. <laughs> no, no, really. Now I think about it, that's just, uh, <laughs> it's much better. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it's 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 a solid soundbar. It's got, like I said, it's got Helios multi-room built in, which is great. You've got, you know, two HDMI inputs. You've got uh, it works with Amazon Alexa, Amazon Alexa. It works with Google Assistant. It's got Apple AirPlay built into it. You know, you th- you can do things like um, you could through the Helios app. You've got Tidal, Tidal, and um, Spotify and Deezer and Amazon Music. Uh, I think Amazon Music HD. In fact, um, Ed, which I think you were talking about not so long ago. So yeah, it's it's well specified. It sounds lovely. Uh, it's very well made. It's a nice piece of kit. Um, but at six nine nine, it, it is a bit toppy on the price, I think, um, considering there are comparable. Well, we're about to talk about one in a second, which uh, does a lot more for the money. But um, I think if you if you if you've invested in the heel sound system in other parts of the house, this is a great choice to not only boost the sound quality of your TV, but also bring bring that multi room system into the lounge at the same time. Uh, and I think that's obviously what uh, what Denon are aiming at. Really, it's, it's it's meant to be part of the uh, of the HEOS system rather than necessarily a you know a, an all, all bells and whistles home cinema um, s- soundbar. So, 
if you want to boost the sound of your TV, if you want to add some more bass to it, um, give you a bigger, a wider soundstage, and bring in the multi aspects that you're already using, this is a good choice. And finally, we've got the Vizio Atmos Soundbar, which is £599. And I've got to say, this one really surprised me because I thought it sounded great. And for a Atmos system, because it is a Dolby Atmos system, so you get in the package for that money, you get the soundbar, you get an, a wireless sub, and you get two wired rear speakers. And the soundbar itself has got upward firing drivers as well as forward firing drivers. So basically you're getting a, a 5.1.2 system. And uh, I quite like the fact that the, the rear speakers are wired because I know lots of people have had problems with things like, you know, um, uh, pairing with the, the rear speakers to the rest of the system, dropouts, this kind of stuff. Stick a wire in there. It's, you know, it's solid and safe as houses. You're not going to have any problems with that. Obviously, it doesn't mean you've got a cable. Uh, and, and you're restricted to the length of the cable, though it's a very long piece of cable, so you, it will do the length of even a decent-sized lounge, but um, you, know, you need to get it out of the way or hide it somehow. But basically, the way you set it up is you put the, the uh, soundbar in front of the TV, put the sub to one side, you plug the rear speakers into the, the rear of the subwoofer, actually. That's where the amplification for, their, for the rear speakers are. So they're just uh, passive speakers on wires, wired passive speakers that go to the rear. And then the upward fire drivers, as I say, are in the soundbar itself. So um, you know, I, I set it up and uh, took you know didn't take very long, and then I uh, put on the Amaze trailer from uh, on the Dolby um, Atmos demo disc, and uh, oh, blimey, that sounds really good. I mean, I've heard that a lot, and I hear it you know in a system in the home cinema that's that's you know nine point two point four at the moment. So I was quite surprised at how decent it sounded. You know, because it's not massively expensive, and you're thinking like, oh, okay, Vizio, but Vizio actually are the biggest seller of soundbars in the United States, and they seem to know what they're doing. Uh, so I thought it was great. I did nice front, wide front soundstage. Central, there's three three channels at the front, so you've got one dedicated center for for, um, for dialogue, the two up firing speakers. I mean, again, my lounge is great for this because it's got a low flat reflected ceiling, so it works really well with these kinds of things, but. Again, the upward fire and drivers are bouncing sounds off the ceiling, so you've got a nice overhead effect. You have the two rear speakers working well, um, and the sub. And you can, in the, um, there's a, uh, a remote yeah, a remote app. You can, there is a remote control, but there's also a remote app. And the remote app is really good because you can you can go in there and you can fine tune the levels for the different cha different channels, uh, which is something you don't see on a lot of, a lot of um, subwoofers, even expensive ones from other manufacturers. So. Good to, it's relatively easy to set up. I mean, you can get it set up in, in minutes, but then you can tweak it to your heart's content and get it sounding just right. Um, and it works really well, and it supports uh, Dolby Atmos. It doesn't support DTS-X, but it does support DTS HD Master Audio. So, so I mean, there's no reason why they couldn't add that at some later stage. Again, I suspect most manufacturers these days seem to be prioritizing Atmos for obvious reasons. It's the dominant immersive audio format, and it's the only one, really, when you're talking about streaming. So I guess that's why it's got... Uh, it's yeah, it's got um, HDMI inputs, obviously ARC. It's a really nice little system, and it genuinely works, and it sounded really good. And I was really impressed with it. I was actually really, really quite surprised at how good it was. And um, uh, for five nine nine, that's a great price. You know, so if you're looking to boost your, you, you say if you've got a, a you know a, a decent sized TV and you want to get a good sound system, you know, a decent big sound system in there, but you want a limited budget, this could be right up your street. I'm glad it's good. Because we've heard a lot about this company and it's their first step into the UK really. I mean, they are big in the States, big in the States with TVs and so on. They are pretty adamant that they're not going to bring their TVs into the UK. But um, it's nice to see them coming in the UK and it's good that it's it's a good product and not just a cheap product, which I think no, no. which I think a lot of manufacturers coming in, uh, Chinese manufacturers, they, they, they'll push this stuff out, but it's, it's not particularly great in terms of quality. Yeah, no, absolutely. This this is this is well made, well specified, competitively priced, and it genuinely sounds good. And uh, yeah, if you you know, if, assuming you've got the right conditions, you know, with a obviously if you've got like a vaulted ceiling, it's not going to work. But if you've got a, a, a normal a normal average living room, this will deliver the goods and uh, make you you know make you really make your viewing experience a you know, much bigger and more immersive experience um, in terms of the, the sonics but also you know uh, you know subconsciously it will make the picture seem better because <laughs> because you add in a good sound system it just makes everything feel better yeah, it's 50 percent of the experience steve yeah, exactly yeah exactly 
Okay, uh, so that's sound bars. Is that everything you're gonna? That, that's that's enough for now, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and and obviously we've got weeks and weeks and weeks of this, Steve. So, you know, let's let's not all uh, let's go through everything just well, yet. Well, next week I can talk about um, a TV review, which will be um, an unusual thing, I think, for a while. Make the most of that. <laughs> our first, our first and last of the year. I well, think. no, no, no. I've I've got a TV in for review at the minute. No, you've got some stuff in. Yeah. No, Although, of the new things I meant sorry the 2020 models yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Ed you want to talk about some hi-fi yeah sort of um, this is actually uh, something I reviewed before the world went bonkers um, it's sat in the tank for a little while uh, but it's quite prescient if you're working from home with your significant other and um, they are complaining that accessing just getting music to your system is a pain in the arse uh, this might be of interest to you and also this is a rare moment because I'm substantially cheaper than anything Steve's talked about because this product is £130 uh, it's from a company called IFI we've tested uh, a product of theirs before which was a, a DAC very much like a Cord Mojo sort of thing this is different uh, it's not portable it's designed to, to sit on, on mains and, and work that way but it's a Bluetooth interface called the Zen Blue and when I say Bluetooth interface it really is a sort of Rosetta stone of bluetooth um <clears throat> in no particular order it does aac aptex uh, aptex hd um uh it's got ldac the uh, sony derivative bluetooth system um and it's got the one special uh, uh configured specially for hua phones which i didn't know existed until this thing turned up um Underneath all of that, of course, it does SBC because it's a Bluetooth product and it's obligated to do SBC. The long and the short of it is that you can connect almost anything to an IFI ZenBlue and it will give you the best available uh, version of Bluetooth that the your, your transmitting device is capable of sending. Um, and then it does a very, very fine job of decoding it. Um, before we talk about sound quality, um, Bluetooth is a game of two halves as well as it having to sound good it has to work properly um and this really does stability um under test was absolutely total across um all of the devices i tested it with um it has long range uh, no dropouts no nothing no interference um and it then uses uh, the uh, the, the signal is decoded via ESS Saber DAC. Uh, some interesting high quality components in the output stage, uh, Panasonic ceramic capacitors. Uh, I mean, they're not expensive, expensive, but they're still quite unusual to find in a 130 quid device. Um, the other thing is, if you're thinking, well, I've already got quite a good digital decoding front end, I don't want to spend 130 quid on something which sort of sits alongside that. Well, good news, because as well as being... Um, able to output over RCA analog if you've got a decent DAC you can simply switch it over to outputting over digital and it becomes a, just a, a Bluetooth streaming head unit um, and because I have a tendency to test anything to well beyond the point where sensible people would tell you to stop uh, I did run an LDAC Bluetooth signal from my phone into the IFI and then out into a seven and a half thousand pound DAC and Scalar combination that lives here at the moment. Um, and I suspect that most people, if they were led into the room and couldn't see what was playing, would not have pegged that to be a Bluetooth stream. It's always a reminder that Bluetooth is capable of quite outstanding results with the right hardware. Uh, I have to say, this is an absolutely outstanding product. For 130 quid, if you are just looking for a quick and easy way of, of really just w wrapping up Bluetooth transmission to your system. This does all of it and it does it absolutely brilliantly and it does it for 130 quid and it's well made, it's easy to use, uh, it has a little illuminated display which tells you what version of Bluetooth you've connected at which is something which sounds ridiculously simple but in terms of working out whether you're actually getting the best performance you can with bluetooth it can be an absolute minefield and this does that as a it solves that as a matter of course it's an absolutely superb product even with the current situation in terms of buying things it is available to buy online from many of our retail you know from many of the av forums supporting retailers and, and, and others uh, it's a genuinely brilliant product and it's 130 quid and it's well worth checking out if you need that sort of thing 
Okay, there you go. Um, review will be up on the website at some point. Probably mm-hmm. not this week because we've still got a little bit of backlog, actually. I've still got the uh, MKs and Morant from last, yeah. last week, so they've still got up this week. But um, yeah, keep an eye on the homepage. It will turn up and it will obviously go into a little bit more detail than Ed has. But thanks very much for that. Uh, next week, like Steve says, he's he's got a TV review. Um, I will have the JVC N5. I, I could have talked about it this week, but seeing as the film section seems to be massive this week, um, we'll leave that to next week and we'll move on to movies next. Okay, so we're going to do this back to front. Uh, film news last. Uh, we'll go into film review first because although the cinemas may be closed, um, we are starting to see stuff that should be at the cinema turn up on video and demand services and Kaz has been having a look at that for us. First thing I've got to say, Kaz, is how much is it to rent one of these films? Fifteen ninety nine. And how long have you got to watch it? 48 hours. And you so, don't get, so I mean, the time the time's okay. Have you got forty eight hours from when you actually start watching. It, yes, isn't it? yes. Yeah. So you you buy it. You've got thirty days to watch it. You've got forty eight hours to finish the rental once you've started pressing play. So so I mean, you could you could start it at eight one evening and then finish it a couple of days later. It's I mean, it's it's. It, I think it's, this it, is it's a good really run. clever from Universal. Really clever. I think it is a, cl- a clever move. The problem is that it's been coupled uh, with. Uh, the bandwidth drop and I think that's where it gets to a slightly sticky right. area yeah. so so, well, so what I've what I've done is I've tested across three platforms and uh, and uh, well inadvertently tested across three platforms and I found <laughs> I found say, that the we didn't pay fifty ninety nine on each one did you no no so <laughs> they're different products I found that Sky was initially problematic because I've got the LG and the Sky Store app on the LG only offers SD. So I I watched The Hunt in SD very begrudgingly on Sky because at the time I watched it, I didn't see that it was available on other formats. I then thought, well, you know what? Other platform. I then thought, you know what? I should have watched it on Apple because Apple is consistently great. I watched it on Apple last night. So so I was going to watch it on Apple. And then I watched The Banker on Apple, which isn't a purchase. It was on Apple TV+. Plus, yeah. And the quality was worse than the SD on the Sky Store. It was The quality of The Banker was like I'd got an illegal copy from the 80s on VHS. It was really, really bad. And for some reason, it was zoomed in, so you couldn't see all the lettering. It did eventually correct itself about halfway through. But the resolution was horrific. Uh, I thought, this, well, this I'm not going to risk... through the built-in app on the LG, yeah? No, this was through For Apple, Apple TV. TV? Okay. Yeah. So I was a little bit shocked with that. So then when it came to reviewing Emma, I went with Amazon, because Sky's SD. Apple was being funky. And I went with Amazon and watched it in HD. And I, honestly, I couldn't see the difference between that and other HD titles that I'd watched previously on Amazon. So I didn't discernibly notice any drop in, in this bandwidth following the decision to, to throttle the bandwidth, uh, or to throttle the resolution that people are seeing, which I, I fully support, I fully understand it. What I think is there's an element of a conflict of in- interest. So in any other times, if you were offering people fifteen ninety nine to watch a cinema release at home with their family in HD, then I think it's a really good price. Sure, it's a rental. It's a really good price for a new movie, which you may not get out to see at the cinema. And even Four if you, you could, could go to the it. cinema, you'd spend yeah. forty, yeah, you'd spend fifty a lot more. quid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a really good deal. And I appreciate there are people who are saying, well, you know, I'll wait three months. Well, you can do that with the cinema as well. So mm-hmm. it's only giving people the option. Where I think the difficulty is is the fact that they've at the same time, quite rightly announced that they're cutting the resolution. So it's not that I don't support that, but if you're going to announce cutting the resolution and still charge fifteen ninety nine, I think there's the potential for the model to break through reasons other than the model. So the business model sounds good, and in the future it could work, but it, it could fail because actually you're doing it at the wrong time. Do you think that this is maybe platform... Uh, based cars because you seem to have had three different uh, experiences across three different platforms. Yes. yes, although I have a feeling that Steve's about to tell me that his Apple looked really good. 
awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I watched so the you... hunt last night on an Apple TV, and the picture quality was fantastic. Yeah, so, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't really know what the what the deal is with that. Whether Apple were just messing around with what resolution they could get at, because if you look at my review of the banker, there are half a dozen people who've commented that they wouldn't watch it because when they started playing it, it looked worse than you know 480. You know, it it looked really really bad, worse than DVD quality. So so it wasn't just me and my device. It, a whole bunch of people said they flat out will wait until the resolutions back up. So I don't really know whether Apple were tinkering and maybe the people who watched it really early were the people who got into trouble. I've, I've no idea what the what the deal was with it, but I, I, I didn't have any of that with Amazon. And in fact, Amazon and Netflix have been pretty consistent despite this talk about dropping resolution. I've only had trouble with Apple and, and Sky and because I don't have a dedicated Sky system. Sky for me is really basically now TV and now the Sky Store. Now TV is horrific, even on a good day. Yeah. I mean, if they drop the resolution anymore, I, I might no, as they won't because it's watching 720. It too much. Anyway, yeah, exactly. And it uses four meg. So yeah, but even yeah. with a, even with a 4K stuff through a Sky Q box, the compression artifacts are, at times are quite shocking to be honest. Um, so even with a 4K UHD films, the the compression algorithms that, that they are using. Um, and the bit rates are using it can look really bad. I, w- I will say that uh, I totally agree with Kaz that it's unfortunate timing that there's been other issues unrelated to Universal. But given that these films were all low budget seven million dollar movies, um, if not less than that in some cases, there was no risk. They'd, and they'd already made a bit of money. Actually, The Invisible Man had made um, over 100 million before all this started to happen. So there's no risk for them at all in terms of box office. There's no, no risk in terms of the budget. Yeah, but what, what they do it's an have interesting though, testing of waters, isn't it? Yeah, but what they do have yeah. now is a strong arm when they go back and start talking to distributors again in cinemas again. Well, it is it is going to be interesting because that you could argue that this is a model that might mean that in the future we only really basically get blockbusters in the cinema. Because I didn't have a problem watching these ones at home. No, and, uh, and, none of them are films you know, I would have bought on disc probably or bothered going to the cinema. But if I can yeah. sit in my own home cinema and for fifty ninety nine watch a film, I mean, I really enjoyed the hunt. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I so, enjoyed the hunt. You know, it, I thought it was um, really it was really sad that it got pulled because of the shootings. Yeah, and the shootings are obviously really sad. But I mean, it's really are uh, unlucky, ironic. That it's the it got second pulled because of the shootings, <laughs> and then and then it got it got released, and then this happened, and yeah. But I mean, it was the one it was a really Gilpin, enjoyable, isn't it? Yeah. That's yes. It. I thought I would it, I thought watch it's a really phone book if I'm honest. I thought it was a really good um, companion piece to Ready or Not, which I yeah. also really enjoyed. It's that kind of vibe, survivalist, slightly satirical. I mean, it's quite heavy-handed in its politics, but not in a way that. But in, in an interesting reversal of the way you'd expect it to be. Yes, it uh, is. which I thought was quite funny. I mean, it's the second thing I've watched recently by Damon Lindelof that I've liked, which surprises me because normally I think he's a talentless hack, but. <laughs> He's no, suddenly yeah, got he, a lot yeah, better in the last two he years. He did Watchmen, and to be fair, it made well, that's me go I mean. back that's and, thing, and watch Leftovers, which which was actually really good as well. Lindelof, the man behind Prometheus and Lost, <laughs> the man who who anywhere any time you've seen his name over the last decade, it's put you off something to the point where he did the Leftovers, which I think is really good, but I don't think enough people watched Terrible it because title, of his, his name. It's also a terrible title, The Leftovers. It sounds like a pile yeah. of pie and mash you haven't finished. Yeah. <laughs> um, Betty Gilpin, by the way, is fantastic in it. Um, she uh, is, Ed, yeah. So you probably want to check it out. She's really good. Uh, oh, she's, a, 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 she's done some incredible acting turns. It's just yeah, it's yeah, one of those in, things um, where, um, uh, due to her, um, uh, just the way she's built, you sort of there's this habit of uh, uh, you know assuming that you can't that that that, that people who are innately beautiful men and women um, don't can't necessarily do sort of more character sort of things. But she's she's turned in some great performances over the years. I mean that autistic lady thing she did for yeah, elementary, elementary is still yeah. one of the most considered portrayals yeah, of really cool. autistic spectrum disorder I think that there's ever been on television. Really impressive. And, and- She's actually really, really odd in this, and it works for her. It's yeah. a real unpredictability to it, slightly 
uh, slightly psychopathic. So, like, I mean, it's not not what you expect from the character at all, and I think it works really well. She's she's got some great lines in it. Good. It's it's a surprisingly good film, and it's been unlucky. The only film more unlucky than this, I guess, is the New Mutants. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that's. that's, that's. <laughs> You know what I would say that I saw Emma as well, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I'm a big fan of the favourite. I know it's a bit divisive and a bit marmite, but I love the the kind of kooky, whimsical style, and it was also quite dark. And I love Rachel Weisz, but um, I thought the favourite was a lot of fun. And Emma, which is a you, has that tone. It has the whimsically playful craziness about it. I mean, I, I it's it's perfect casting for for Bill Nye. And um, Anya Anya Taylor Joy, she's really good in it. She's I saw her recently in Thoroughbreds, and she's still playing the same kind of sociopathic role as that. So they've turned Emma into like a pure period sociopath. <laughs> um, and I'm watching it with my seven year old daughter, and she's absolutely loving it in a Downton kind of way. And I'm sitting there, you know, chuckling at this ridiculous social etiquette that they're that they're poking fun at. Um, it's it was it was nice. I I was pleasantly surprised by that. So I'd recommend the hunt and and Emma, uh, if people can find it on the right format. And at the moment, for me, that would be Amazon. And, and did but, you also review the Invisible Man at the cinema? I haven't seen the Invisible Man. Oh, right. Yet. Okay, right. So so um, Kamari saw that at the cinema, and, and that's I w- got good reviews. Isn't it? it has, but I I'm not uh, I'm not itching to to give that a rental particularly not, there's the going to be a slew of these yeah it, it can and there's a slew of these coming out they've got um, Sonic on next Friday and then Not they've got <laughs> they've got a couple which are going straight to Netflix and they've got oh god there's a whole lineup. Trolls they got Trolls Trolls World Tour um, yeah, and then obviously uh, The Lovebirds <laughs> that's the one that's going to to Netflix all I would say is that if we're talking about the most unlucky movie, I have to put Professor and the Madman to be even more unlucky than anything we've mentioned. Because that, that baby has been worked on by Gibson for 20 years, and it was shot in 2016, and it was dumped. I didn't even notice. It just suddenly appeared on Amazon Prime. And uh, I'd been looking out for it for a while, but probably given up on it. I mean, it's a it's a shocking production history that has disowned by Gibson and by the writer director, his screenwriter behind um, Apocalypto. Uh, it wasn't even finished, at least not with their involvement. And they wanted to, they took it to court to try and block it from getting released. And obviously, studios being studios, they they pushed ahead and released it anyway. It's not a train wreck of a movie, but it is, you know, Gibson and Sean Penn putting in good performances uh, in a movie that it hasn't quite been put together right and uh, suddenly Snowpiercer style just appears on Amazon you know because it's the same with Snowpiercer you know it was shot years ahead and if you didn't import the disc you wouldn't have watched it until suddenly one day it appears on Amazon Prime and you're thinking they really don't want anyone to see this movie wasn't it Netflix it appeared on it was Netflix yeah. was it Netflix first yeah, yeah okay Netflix Netflix. Right, so uh, with cinemas being closed, cars, that means that there's no films being released in the cinema, and like we say, uh, it's all come into video and demand. You've covered a lot of the titles there, so we'll move on. 4K releases this week. Le Mans 66. Uh, I'm not sh- entirely sure on the sh- shipping process because there's been some delays recently. Well, mine says but, it's turning uh, up tomorrow, but we'll wait and see on that because Amazon have been a bit... Yeah, what a yeah. disc. What yeah, a so disc. I'm, oh, you got the American one, have you? Yeah, yeah. What a surprise. You've had it for like three months. Uh, two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. It's a great film too. I mean, you already know that because you guys saw it at the cinema. But um, I haven't seen it. it. Looks, I haven't seen it. Uh, so I'm, it's a I'm fantastic really film. Looking forward to it. Even don't tell, don't tell me head. who wins. No, I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm, I'm even joking, not I'm joking. Joking. <laughs> Well, uh, no, I, I've got to say actually, I knew nothing about uh, Le Mans sixty six for four versus Ferrari. Can so uh, for me, it was quite that. well. I knew I knew who Carol Shelby was because of you, <laughs> but. Um, but uh, I had no idea what actually happened in the race and what happened afterwards and all that stuff. So for me, it was quite shocking. It's like, oh, Christ. Um, brilliant, though. Brilliant film. Performances are absolutely amazing. Uh, Matt, Matt Damon as Carol Shelby is fantastic. Christian Bale is, as always, um, incredible. The scene where he tells, explains to his son about the perfect lap is a gorgeous yeah. bit of yeah. filmmaking. Performance, the writing, the photography, the sun setting over LAX at the time. It's a 
brilliant scene that just it's just what filmmaking is all about mm-hmm. i um i loved it absolutely loved it, it. it helps that for that awesome scene, he does keep the same same accent all the way through um, <laughs> he's brought the accents a, yeah. a bit up and down <laughs> it, it's better than an american trying to do it though isn't it yeah, yeah at least he does try and do a brummy accent yeah uh, um but yeah it's uh f- i mean the scene when um shelby takes henry ford yeah. In, into the car i mean you, you go from uh, sort of laughing to crying it's it's a fantastic sequence yeah. Yeah. and again sounds amazing uh it uh it was it's one of my favorite films of the last 10 years that, i mean that, that scene you, you hit the nail on it because you're laughing because you think he's he's shit scared <laughs> it, it, you think he's crying because he's shit scared yeah, and, he's and it's scared, not yeah it's no, not it's because not. of that at all, and it's it, and it's the way it twists that scene is really really good. Right, uh, waiting on my disc turning up tomorrow. Hopefully, it will. Well, you'll be in for a treat. Uh, no, I'm just we- annoyed that having discovered that they actually Americans actually referred to Christian Bale's character as Terry Teabag, that they yeah. didn't call him that at any stage in the film. <laughs> just, there's a missed opportunity there, although it may not have made sense to an international audience. Speaking of Le Mans, quickly, this is for you, Ed. Uh, did been you watch reached, Steve McQueen, The Man in Le Mans? I didn't. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to oh, say. Oh no, no, um, no! Forget the film. I've got no interest in seeing the film. Is it meant to be one of the most or, the, the documentary Steve McQueen? The Man and Le Mans was on uh, Thursday night on B- B- uh, BBC Four. So oh, I like player. It. Absolutely brilliant. The yeah, story was... behind the making of the film. My God. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was about to say, oh, no, I, th- I thought you were flagging up. Um, apparently, I mean, I still don't necessarily know if this is enough time, but uh, the... Um, uh, I can't remember what the body that does endurance car racing is these days. They rename themselves every year anyway. But Le Mans is supposed to happen in September. Um, and it's never, ever, ever been run that late in the year. Uh, and uh, depending on what the weather does, that could be what, I mean, obviously. Ooh, Monson who knows Street with some rain or a greasy surface. Well, I mean, it, it rains It rains periodically at Le Mans anyway, but the idea of it potentially being 24 hours of sustained cold overcast mm. uh, will be, um, yeah, interesting. If enough people haven't top being be, be taken out by coronavirus that could be <laughs> equally um, problematic no, i was no, gonna no. say did you watch the documentary phil yeah, yeah i watched yeah. it yeah i mean some of the techniques they were using to to capture uh, shooting <laughs> shooting the footage at 200 miles an hour health and safety hell. did not exist <laughs> It did Steve not McQueen exist. driving a car at 200 miles an hour i yeah. mean i mean the footage they capture you'll never see anything like it again because it's all for real I mean, they they didn't obviously race in the race. They shot the race though using camera cars that came ninth. <laughs> Actually, in the race, the camera cars came. They weren't officially entered, but they came ninth technically. Um, so they shoot footage in the race with camera cars that are racing, uh, and then they recreate the race on the track afterwards uh, using specially fitted camera cars and racing drivers and Steve McQueen, and they're filming at 200 miles an hour. And they're thinking bloody hell there's, there's a reason why <laughs> one Steve... guy did lose part of his leg uh, in a nasty crash the other guy got burnt in a nasty crash proper racing drivers um, it's a brilliant documentary Ed you've got to watch it I'll, find, yeah, I'll, I'll dig it out <laughs> it's no problem yeah, it's, uh, not absolutely. like I've got much else to do <laughs> but, um, <laughs> one of the things I did learn um, after watching the uh, Le Mans 66 or Ford vs Ferrari was that Ferrari never won another Le Mans after no, that that was it that's an amazing um, start because they were winning it year on year on year on year and then have never won it since. Is it poor in fairness, it's, it's more to do with the, the rise of uh, you know some blokes in Stuttgart yeah, yeah, whose Porsche, yeah. company begins with P rather than Ford. But nevertheless, it's um, I mean, yeah, it, it's quite dominant. arresting. Yeah, but no, Porsche, you say, Porsche had a, a period of, of, a, of absolute dominance and then um, it all went, uh, you know, it's sort of, actually, I mean, the 80s was probably the golden era for it in terms of the, the number of different people who were capable of winning. But, I mean, it's I suppose it's also a reflection that as the arrival of companies into uh, and, and teams into Formula One who it wasn't just about putting the biggest engine you could find into something which just about went round corners, it required a focus of resource for Ferrari that re- that required them to stop paying as much attention to endurance racing. Mm. Yeah, 
and, and it's a shame that we're never going to see stuff like that ever again. You know, it's all dying out. I mean, I, like you say, the eighties and nineties was probably the last sort of golden period for motorsport, whether it was rallying or Le Mans or uh, you know, Formula One still around, but it's it's not a sport anymore, really, is it? I mean, it's it's real. I don't know. I'm looking forward to the virtual race. <laughs> That could actually be. I mean, that 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 has the hallmarks to unfortunately end Formula One for real forever. <laughs> you know, the moment that actual drivers just you know high on diet coke and and, and Doritos decide to just go for it in a in a in a virtual sense, that it, it will probably undo. You know, the the level the levels of carnage will mean that we can never return to real racing. As I understand it, at the time we're recording this. I believe that NASCAR has been experimenting with a virtual race as well, but I have no means, I have no uh, understanding of how we might work out how that's gone from the UK. So we'll have to look, wait for the virtual race for Formula One and see how that goes instead. I'm still looking forward to the Premier League finishing on Football Manager <laughs> <laughs> or FIFA. <laughs> I, I still think I still think that'd be fa- potentially, you know, <laughs> the most financially expensive game, computer games that have ever taken place. But nevertheless, I, I, you know, rather than just you know saying yeah. oh it ends here, just do that, you know, yeah, bit, bit, bit oh, of FIFA it, twenty. It, yeah, it's all going to get litigious, isn't it? Really, at the end of the day, it's, I, I don't see any other way it happening. Anyway, uh, so that's four K releases, Le Mans sixty six. There's no Blu ray releases, right? Cars, TV and streaming releases. I know you're dying to talk about Disney Plus, so Disney Plus starts. Oh, well, if you're listening to the podcast on Monday. It starts tomorrow, uh, 24th of March. On you go. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been tainted somewhat by the announcement that Disney Plus is joining the the people who are going to obviously reduce the quality of their streaming. Because one of the big things about Disney was it was going to land 4K for everyone who's 4K able. And that was going to be pretty big. And Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Yeah, so we're not getting any of that. But nonetheless, we're finally getting we the not? Mandalorian. No, we will be. Uh, we will, but not for the first month. I mean, that's probably what. Well, we still have Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. That doesn't take up any bandwidth. Has this, sure. has this been confirmed anywhere, Kaz? Yeah, I, Disney I... Plus has joined the the. That was yeah, one of the last ones that won. Still Dolby Vision on Netflix. I mean, I've got. I've got to be honest. I haven't seen any difference. I haven't seen any quality. difference. I've been have watching. No, nope, Netflix. And I say, what, and... if one more. Sorry, Phil. I was going to say one more bloody. And I'm talking about two Pacific journalists here. One of which you would moan about anything. You can give him a gold, solid gold toilet. He'd been moaning. Where's the nearest? Where's the free toilet paper? And the other one, he just does it for hits. Um, but you know, this isn't important. People are dying. I don't really give a monkeys if if they have to strangle you know bandwidth yeah. because of that. I mean, this is an <laughs> this is a come on, guys. Yeah, get it, real. Gets, Who it does. Cares? It, it does get a bit silly when there's what what you know what uh, megabits per second are you getting on your stream? Really? You're gonna you're gonna care? Yeah. Um, yeah. And apart from anything else, I've got one and a half thousand Blu-rays and 4K discs. I could watch exactly. a film a day yeah. for the next four and a half years and not watch the same film twice. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my most popular tweets of the year. That one, I, yeah, I was quite yeah, surprised with that. Good. You know, Net- Netflix reducing the quality. I said, well, you know, I might even get round to watching Game of Thrones on Blu-ray. Yeah. To be fair, Steve, as I did point out on Twitter, it, it you know, it, it within that that vast library there's about 150 films worth watching and just a load of things that are really good most, really good discs that's not true most of my stuff particularly my blu-rays a lot of them are, yeah, a lot of classics in there I watched The Princess Bride a couple of nights ago absolutely brilliant I've never seen that is it available on streaming or whatever because I'd, I'd like to see that Actually, yeah well, it was on Netflix it may not be there anymore but it definitely yeah. was uh, last in the time. same way that Contagion Disappeared sharpish. Oh, I, fi- I found uh, I found my Blu-ray at the back of the cupboard. So yeah, that, I've added that to the to watch pile. So but this, this has it. made it, made it acutely aware that you know when it comes to certain things, like obviously this is unique circumstances, but throttling of bandwidth, things disappearing from from streaming services. Give me a disc any day of the week because then I, I know I'm going to get the perfect quality every single time. No, I'll agree with you, but but. For me, I think um, it because one of the things was I was looking at all the Blu-rays in my obviously I was looking for Contagion, so I was going through my uh, you know Blu-ray piles and piles and piles, and there's stuff in there that I have never watched, still wrapped um, yeah. in cellophane, and and I just think, well, what a waste that is because when am I ever going to sit down? At least on a streaming service, I can click past it and. You know, I'm not losing anything, but I actually bought those physical discs. They're taking up space, and I've never actually watched them. To be honest with you. In answer to your question, where you're going to watch them, Phil? I would suggest over the next few months. <laughs> I would. I have to say, can I just be clear? I am currently at inbox zero on records. I'm all caught up. Listen to everything. Um, 
I'm eyeing up something on Discogs at the moment to to to. <laughs> to well, no, I mean, but the thing is, I I did I had reached the point I was at, I was into double figures of stuff which had turned up and hadn't actually got around to you know physically running through, yeah. which is given especially some of it's used and the sellers are desperately awaiting feedback on Discogs is poor form, but I'm all up to speed. So um, yes, if there's one silver lining to this cloud, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. So anyway, Disney Plus. It's launching on Tuesday. I've got to say, I am looking forward to it. I want to see Mandalorian. I haven't seen Mandalorian at all. Clone Wars, I, I am assuming that all the seasons are going to be on there. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. I haven't seen there. any Clone Wars, so I'm going to yeah, start from Yeah, me too. Season. I'm going to have watched all of it. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to watch a, at least 150 episodes of The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 pretending that I'm going to pay any attention to anything else until I've done that is irrelevant. That's what That's <laughs> what I've subscribed for. And there's episodes which I haven't, they haven't cropped up on either. uh, I mean, they may have done. I just, I've missed them for donkey's years. I can't remember the last time that either Channel 4 or Sky, for example, I mean, it's an episode I've seen hundreds of times, but I can't remember the last time I watched Mr. Plow. And I need to see it as a okay. matter of urgency. So I've, that's that's what Disney's there for. I think I got to season. I think it was it season seven or season eight, and I gave up on The Simpsons. It 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 ran its course with that point. I think it was when um, Conan O'Brien left the writing team. That's when it started to go downhill for me, anyway. But even up until that point, that's still three figures worth of episodes. And there are one or two after that. But I mean, You Only Move Twice is one of my favourite episodes of all time, and I think that's season eight. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm surprised you said Simpsons and not Forged and Fire because you should be able to get that on uh, Nat Geo. Oh you? God, if Air Crash Investigation Air is Crash on there as well, I, yeah. I'm, I will, you know, I, I will accept confinement and oh, just think, sit down and start about the noodles. I think Forged and Fire moved to history though, so yeah. Well, I mean, it did. Uh, I, I don't. I, as I say, I'm hoping that. Um, that some air crash investigation has made it because I I missed that and there's very few other ways of of of, of watching watching that and be, be delirious to see that again. <laughs> You're gonna be I mean, obviously immensely happy watching plane crash investigation. Well, that thing I copied you into on Twitter, which you did take in good faith. That that confession on that website. I watch air. I enjoy watching air crash investigation, but I'm I'm disappointed if the episode has any survivors in it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, anonymous uh, confession probably yeah. worth putting out there. But yeah, it's but like, is is it even a crash if there's survivors? Well, as you said, yeah. Well, it's it's <laughs> yeah, it's just an unhappy landing, isn't it? So, um. uh, right. So um, Disney Plus streaming wise, um, it should be a, a big player, and it's come along at a time where I think lots of people are, are obviously needing new, new things to watch, and I'm sure we'll all get through that. So we've kind of been discussing most of these points all night but obviously um, we're seeing some major changes being forced on the industry um, because of the pandemic and there's lots of things going on not just in in cases of you know um, we're now all going to be stuck indoors and watching films there's actually stuff happening Steve you pointed this out on the financial markets I mean the financial markets have gone to pot I mean is the economies of every country is absolutely sunk at the minute which makes certain companies incredibly vulnerable at the minute and one of those companies who just two or three months ago were the dominant film studio on the planet are now in quite a precarious position Steve yes Disney of all people suddenly finds themselves in real trouble because they've obviously been on a spending spree for the last decade Pixar Marvel Lucasfilm and then 20th Century Fox have spent nearly 100 billion um and their business, you know, what do they make their money from? Theme parks, all shut. Movies, all gone. Sports, ESPN is their, you know, their major sports broadcast in the States in particular, all gone. Uh, so apart from Disney Plus, which is, you know, it's clearly going to benefit at the moment because people are stuck at home, three of their major revenue streams have just disappeared. Uh, and that's and their market cap has been you know, has dropped by a third, more than a third in the last month. So, um They've suddenly become very vulnerable to takeover, and the rumours are that Apple, who have you know hundreds of billions in cash, uh, I've now now looking at Disney as as a you know if it drops a bit further, um, so suddenly it could start to look quite cheap. And I think Apple, you know, if you watch Apple TV Plus, there's some good stuff on it. I, I'm enjoying uh, Amazing Stories. I enjoyed uh, For All Mankind, but let's be honest, it's pretty light on content. Uh, buying just Disney solves that in one swell <laughs> <Yeah>. swoop. <laughs> so, uh, 
So yeah, that's the reason. And what was it? What was the last time anyone count cal- cal- uh, a- Apple's? It's it's isn't it in excess of two billion dollars of just cash reserve before yeah, got any cash. any requirement to do anything like raise capital or anything silly like that. They've just you know the current account has got <laughs> twenty zeros in it. So yeah, it's a it's a worry, uh, and it must be said that certain companies are going to come out of this quite heavily capitalized at a point where nothing else is so i mean you know you can look forward to um to uh walmart corporation having its own own air force by the time that we're by yeah, the yeah time. i mean if things, things are happen rich, this is if you if you look at it from a certain perspective if you're cash rich and interest rates are zero mm. and and company market caps have just plummeted now is a perfect time to buy stuff <laughs> uh, and that will happen definitely we will see a lot of consolidation uh, which is not necessarily bad, would it, but um, would it get through competition laws? Though that's the that's a thing. Yeah, it would. It wouldn't. I think Amazon, Apple. In, sorry, I think Apple buying Disney. There's no. Yeah, there's no obvious. Not, you know, yeah, Apple don't really have a presence. Um, they're just a platform. So from their perspective, um, yeah, they've been. I mean, they let Disney buy Fox. I mean, that was clearly more of a com- a, a competition issue, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think any problems there. And so that could be very interesting because. Um, it certainly wasn't, you know, if you'd, if you'd said that two months ago, people are going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Just near a behemoth. But uh, suddenly, in the space of a month, they've gone from being the king of everything, uh, who, you know, had eight of the top ten films of last year worldwide, uh, to suddenly losing three quarters of their revenue streams overnight, literally. Um, and... Uh, yeah, suddenly they don't look quite so strong. And you know, it depends, obviously depends on how long this goes on for, but you know, you could be talking about a year or 18 months of, I mean, seriously damaged revenue streams. I, mean, I wonder if they're going to... Theme re- parks are sorry, clearly going to suffer. I wonder if they're regretting, um, you know, this introductory... I, I, I'm assuming in the great scheme of things doesn't make that much of a difference, but the introductory sign-up offer to Disney+, Plus, just at the point where more capital would have probably been quite useful... It wasn't um, a massive discount, though, was it? It was fifty no. quid instead of sixty quid. So, but it all—I suppose it's, it's in, in, in the words of my mother. It all adds up. But, um, then, but then that was all advanced, advanced payments. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite a, an injection of cash there, because mm-hmm. everything's paying up front. So uh, uh, say it'd be interesting to see how that 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 pans out. I mean, as long as um, there is a uh, limited edition Mickey Mouse iPhone 12 XR that some book <laughs> is prepared to spend fifteen hundred pounds for, I am all for this this this, this hostile takeover. It'd be interesting to see what the take up is for Disney Plus. I mean, I think under normal circumstances, it probably wouldn't have been that big because, well, like for example, quite a lot of my friends, you know, I said, "Have you got Disney Plus?" And they went, "No." Because and I said, why not? Well, we watched the Mandalorian last year, um, and by other means, and um, and there's nothing else that we want right now. Because you know, unless you know, the Marvel shows aren't till later in the year, if at all, at the moment, because I guess they're going to be delayed. And the Mandalorian's supposed to have season two towards the end of this year, but again, I mean, presumably they're, they're I might think, be delayed. I think there. the uh, I think the finished um, filming, so they finished the shooting course, it, yeah. but they've got to do the effects, haven't they? Still, so yeah, but people could do that in their bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, yes, um, well, actually, apparently, they can do that, so. major news was they've they've cast um, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, so that's fantastic news. Because mm-hmm. I was hoping they would bring a live action Ahsoka into the um, into the Mandalorian because it's Dave Filoni a character, um, and apparently they have. So, and I think she's a really good choice to play the part. So. Uh, um, that's actually some really interesting news there. Um, so yeah, I hope it does come out at the end of the year because I'm looking forward to it. But um, clearly they're going to be delayed. What I mean is they don't really have a lot of new shows, do they, Disney? Uh, and also Disney Plus is very much aimed at kids. Uh, it's not you know, particularly adult. I mean, other than things like Marvel or Star Wars, but most of it is children's content. And so a lot of my friends have said, oh, I'm not getting that. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see, A, it would be interesting to see how it would have done without the problem of the pandemic. But obviously now people are stuck at home and trying to entertain children they might well find that they get a bigger take-up than they thought they would have. Um, so yeah, I think Disney's problem is you might think initially, well, they've got tons of content. They've got a lot of stuff and a lot of films and things, but they haven't got a lot of new content. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it plays out next week. 
the, I think Steve is on the same lines. We, if we're looking for silver linings in clouds, as the independent in the in the, in um, amongst the multi, you know, the the enormo corporations, whether this ha- is something that's a genuine saving grace for Netflix in terms of you know reminding people that it's you know um, it, 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 it's a, a worthwhile service in its own right, and and you know maintaining the numbers, maintaining the traction, maintaining people's interest in it. Um, I, I wonder if this actually ends up being something that's rather beneficial to its ongoing existence. Yeah, I've, I've got to say I'm surprised how well Netflix is still doing. I thought Netflix would start to struggle, especially with all the doom and gloom towards the tail end of last year, you know, all the debt that they were in and they were having to restructure stuff and, you know, a lot of series hadn't, uh, or a lot of the films hadn't actually um, been successful. But but then they had quite a, a, a good run of movies, didn't they, really, Cars? That, they weren't excellent, but they were above average. And then things have, have kind of gone from strength to strength there in terms of um, they're still around and still people are still using them and actually there's quite a bit of content turning up now in terms of films and so on that um, are, are popping up on Netflix round about the same kind of time that they're popping up elsewhere which was always a problem for Netflix it was always six months behind everybody else yeah I think Netflix I, I, I favour Netflix despite them being uh, questionable quantity over quality I, I do like it when you find a gem in there and I do enjoy their productions they've got they've got a, a, a visual standard which I think is pretty high and I like uh, if you want to compare them to Amazon for example I, I like the fact that there's a lot of stuff that comes on Netflix even if you have to sift through some stuff that you might not have otherwise watched when you come across something good and the fact that they kind of favor genres I like like sci-fi um, I'm I'm always up for that. Uh, Amazon they produce some quality things, but their their quantity is in some ways little more than Apple. The only difference is that Amazon have a lot of old back catalogue titles as well, yeah. but their actual Amazon original qu- quota is probably maybe even less than what Apple churn out. So uh, so I think that I I I have a soft spot for Netflix and and I think you're right Phil I think they've they've had a few nice hits in different arenas so they've they've had some Oscar um nods through things like Roma and The Irishman and they've had some Marriage bigger story. blockbuster successes you know they've yeah Marriage Story exactly and these two are an uncut gems uncut two coach I mean, yeah, yeah these are these are films that are worth seeing um, I've got a lot of time for them, so so if you can get through the rest, then yeah, there's there's stuff to find. And I just they... hope they filmed a second series of Hyperdrive because if we're <laughs> if we're shut in, for, I will need a second series of Hyperdrive. But would you still uh, watch yeah, it on yeah. fast forward? Oh, have you got the time to spend? <laughs> well, I don't know. It would be an interesting test of my, my mental resolve and well-being. As <laughs> Everyone's going at cope, 300 cope, miles an hour. Cope with the American commentary by that point. But it was, I just, it was a lovely, brainless program. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I, at least uh, Netflix were wise enough to pass on Picard. You know. Oh my God! <laughs> oh Jesus! I I, I'm glad I get my update on on the podcast because I haven't watched any Picard since the pilot. But every week I come on here and all you guys are talking about is how it's got worse and worse. Oh, it's it's just utter drivel now. I mean, um, that that's part it's one. Common. It's part one of the final episode was uh, Friday, and um, it 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 wasn't good at all. I'm assuming that next week's episode or this Friday's episode will be a giant space battle. Like well, it has to Discovery be. Season yeah, it has, two. it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and if you're a fan of red letter media, if you're a fan of yeah. red letter media, watch that instead of Picard because that's more entertaining. And and some of the theories and stuff is really entertaining. So. <laughs> I love the way that Mike, Mike keeps making Rich do those <laughs> those, those review things. He's like, I don't want to do any more. I'm not doing Discovery season three. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's absolute cobblers. It's, it's just it's re- a really shame because, you know, it's nice to see Picard back, but the series is rubbish. Did you give uh, War of the Worlds a go? No, I haven't yet. I will. I mean, it's, plenty, it's not like I've got, you know, plenty of time. Because um, <laughs> uh, Westworld was back, so we all must have watched Westworld. What do we think? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I, I, I did. I'll tell you what I did on the War of the Worlds. I sat down and listened to the entire Jeff Wayne one on vinyl, including the really which is still the frog second half. Yeah, and and that's clearly still the the best of them all. Um, although I've got a soft spot for the one the 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 film from the fifties. 
the fifties or the sixties. Uh, that's that's my, yeah, Carl, it's just cold, yeah, cold that, war I, yeah. I, I, I quite like that. Um, and Jeff Wayne, but this one, the reason that I, I'm actually enjoying it now, it's not because it's got strong characters because it hasn't. There's a lot of annoying characters in there, which you tend to find in these things anyway. Some of the writing's a bit mm, okay, and some of the dialogue's a bit clunky. But actually, I quite like the contemporary way they're they're doing this. Now we're only up to episode four, I think, or five, and we still haven't seen the full reveal yet. Um, it's it's a slow burner, it, but I've jumped a few times. Um, it's it's intriguing me, and I quite like the contemporary way that they're doing things. It's not following the book in any way whatsoever. So they're they're actually putting a real spin on it that's that's interesting and it's interesting that we're in the middle of a pandemic because you're looking at some of the some of the some, some of the streets in London and that kind of thing and you're thinking well that's what it kind of looks like at the minute Just, now would be a great time to film a pandemic film because the streets are empty <laughs> well Danny, um, so Danny Boyle it, had to do it at five at yeah, four yeah, or five in the morning didn't he yeah. Yeah. Um, is, is it a Sky production film uh, no it's Fox it's Fox and oh, Canal right. Plus so, because I was wondering what the French angle was. Well, it's a it's a co-production, so right. some of the characters are French in it, and some of the dialogue is in French. Are they That's the annoying it's... ones? No, it's when's it available ones. till? When's it available till? I mean, you know, when they well, say I'd... this episode available. Well, you till. see, I've got Sky Q, so I think it's on there all the time. Whereas on Now TV, I'll I think they tend to remove. I'll, 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 I'll check because what I was thinking was we're letting you watch the whole series because if it ends up being pants like Picard. Because too often they start well and then they go downhill. Well, Kaz, <laughs> and I can't bother to put the time in. Kaz wasn't impressed with the first couple of episodes, were you, Kaz? I thought it was better than the BBC's take. <laughs> um, that, I know that. Yeah, that, that's, that's damning my faint please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, look. I I will watch the rest of it. I haven't got around to it because I had to finish the out um, the Outsider, which I thought was excellent. And because there's so much new content coming out, so I will return to it. And I, I never returned to the BBC one. That was no, just no, no, no. Awful. Most people without so, brain damage wouldn't. So. Yeah. So <laughs> only Ed and I. So there is, it there is, there is, <laughs> there is more to this. But, but it did frustrate me a little bit because I, I like Gabriel Byrne, and I agree with Phil that the French characters are almost, almost without any kind of fault in terms of their innate stupidity and melodramatic sub arcs but some of the characters particularly the teen oh, boy yeah, in it yeah. irritated me and the fact that Gabriel Gabriel Burns story I mean he's a scientist and he could have some insight into it all but he has to be beleaguered by the story about how he's got an estranged wife and you know he might have inadvertently killed her new husband on the way to saving her life which I have to say she's extremely ungrateful for him saving her life even before she finds out so she must have read the script it, but, it um, improves as, as, as it goes on and, and the characters obviously they have time to flesh them out and there's new characters joining in all the time and so on which some I think work some other, uh, and others are not great but I think it's worth your time and I think uh, yeah I will, I will go back to it I will yeah. And I've been it watching, is, as you say, perfect time. Yeah, I've been tuning in every week, so so I must be enjoying it if I'm tuning in every week. It's not like me to watch stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, was, I finally got around to watching Pandemic on Netflix, a brilliantly timed series, um, which A, reminded you that we've known this is coming for decades, well, since 1918, really, in Spanish flu. So, you know, there's no excuse for us not being prepared. Everyone has been banging on about it for long enough. Um, and in fact, the, the series ends was shot last year. I think some was made last year. So anyway, it ends with like this is going to happen. You think oh, it could be more prophetic if it tried. But then I started thinking, wait a minute. Two months ago, Disney were king. Netflix were in trouble. Now Netflix are king and Disney are in trouble. But it, it's um, it's a scary uh, series. That's it all is, the yeah. more scary. I really enjoyed the return of Westworld. Now I was a little bit concerned about it coming back. I, I didn't really watch the trailers and I wasn't really eagerly anticipating it because I love Westworld, I, I love HBO Productions uh, I thought Westworld the first season was very clever I loved Anthony Hopkins in it and I did like the convoluted time out of place style which led me on well enough that I was surprised at where it ended up at I could have guessed some of it but it, it, it did well uh, second season when you know that everything's going to be out of non-linear I was really disappointed that they tried to double down on the confusion because I thought that just made it contrived 
and and I enjoyed the second season, but it was contrived. So it was a tough slog getting to the end of it. So when the third season came out, I thought they're going to have to really do something. And I thought the opening of the third season was excellent. Yeah, got I really you. enjoy the fu- future scape. I really, I mean, we got to see where it goes. Don't get me wrong. And the the uh, the stinger in the mid credits or the end of which the they wouldn't do that. I turned off at the credits. Yeah. Like, okay, that's that then. And I found out later. I had to go back and watch that bit. It's like, yeah, just I mean, put it in the that, bloody episode. That's that's an interesting stinger. They could they could end up in a either doing really well with it or they could just mess up with non-linear contrived plotting again. But for the most part, I really enjoyed this future tech world. It felt to me a little bit like uh, the story of Ex Machina where the girl from Ex Machina gets free and gets on the helicopter and leaves the little bunker. Spoiler for everyone who's not seen Ex Machina. Uh, and what happens to her when she hits society. So it felt a little bit like, what would that story be like? Which I've always wondered a little bit about. Because this is the girl from Westworld, who's uh, an artificial, and she's hit future scape Los Angeles. And... Uh, you know, the world's her oyster. She can tap into any kind of tech. She can bypass any kind of home security system. She, it's it's a really interesting premise to go with for the third season. And I had my doubts. I thought that they were actually tricking us. And this wasn't um, the real world. This was Future World, which was just another uh, they game. They dropped a few hints in about... It's a bit when they're discussing, you know, whether we're living in a simulation. Oh, well, hang on yeah. a minute. Plus, but also, if you're doing criminal activities, don't use an app. Isn't that just going to be for police get hold of one of those phones? Aren't they going to have access to all of the people who are doing all yeah, that I mean, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, all, I'm, <laughs> all I'm going with, is, and it's probably why I, I am still cautiously optimistic on this, is the fact that if, they do, if it does turn around and it is just another world, I'll, be, I'll possibly be a bit disappointed because I think it was a breath of fresh air escaping the theme park to see what it's like in the real world for one of these artificial characters. If it's actually just that she's broken out of one to get into another, uh, I think that's almost a bit abortive in terms of, of plotting. It's a bit Super Mario, the princess yeah. is in another castle. Yeah, unless Plus, I've woken up in the shower, it was a dream. But How big is... are these theme parks? <laughs> yeah, quite, quite. I mean, it's ridiculous. But Yeah, well, I mean, Westworld's about the size of Arizona, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the weird thing is, Westworld, you know, I can understand the idea behind going on a holiday to Westworld. Who doesn't want to be a cowboy? It would be fun. I'm not entirely sure I'd want to go maybe spend time at the British Raj, Raj world. The Shogun world? Eh. But, okay, no one is going to admit to wanting to go on a holiday to Nazi-occupied Europe <laughs> unless they're the Nazis. <laughs> so, I'm not sure yeah, that's, that's going to sell well yeah. as a yeah, destination. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't maybe, sure about that the, one. Maybe the plot for that one, I mean, who knows, but maybe the idea for that one is being the resistance. Yeah, you go as the resistance side. rather yeah. than the SS. I mean, you have to be particularly rather... psychopathic to want to go into Nazi-occupied Germany as the bad guys. I, I, but then again, they did that in Westworld, didn't they? They had a few people oh, in yeah, Westworld yeah. who were just there to be bad. I think they've demonstrated in the real world that there are a number of people out there who are clearly dicks. So um, uh, we, we, we probably shouldn't assume exactly what people would and wouldn't do. Um, so yeah, may, maybe that's that, that that's a simple realization of what they've capitalized in. Let's be honest, th- those black and silver uniforms are it's a good look. Hugo Boss, <laughs> Hugo Boss, new added <laughs> design uniform, didn't he? And, and why is it I always think of the um, the uh, <laughs> web sketch, the witch on web sketch? Yep. <laughs> have we got oh, skulls? Are we the bad guys? <laughs> I don't yeah. know that I, I ho- I'm hoping they're getting some money uh, just for the sheer number of times I've seen the um, working from working home. Working at home, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, sure. that was, ironically, that was a trending <sighs> subject on uh, Twitter this week for some it strange was. reason. Um, the uh, the word wanking was <laughs> the number one phrase. I don't know why, but well, self isolation, I mean- so. Let's face it, as, as they said in that sketch, you know, got to be careful. I nearly wanked the whole business away in the first year, you know. So, um, <laughs> also, I, there's that sketch when they're doing the quiz show stay indoors, <laughs> remain indoors. It became prophetic if ever I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. the event, the yeah. event. 
questions. Okay. <laughs> so on that event, uh, that's it for this week. Um, my thanks to Ed Selly. It's just a prank, a hoax. The boy's hiding in a barn. Carl That's not why you're here. That's not why you're here. You're here because of the system. And Steve Withers. Colonics for everyone. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, bookmarkaviforums.com for latest reviews, news and video. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on iTunes, but only if you enjoyed the show. Also, head over and check out our YouTube channel for more videos on the latest product launches and reviews. And while you're there, feel free to subscribe. I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again next week. (laughs) 